and that gateway. It's been such a process over the last two years. Are we any closer? The gateway's done. It's, it's done. done and approved. Okay. And guess what? When does that come in? Oh, oh that? Wow. <laughs> it's New York State. She sounds like Jenna. Where's my paycheck? Yeah. <laughs> um, the gateway is done and approved, and I have a signed contract from the state of New York for you guys. It's only, you know, February and it ends 331, just saying. So I did ask her questions today. That opens Pandora's box, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I asked her, can I tell you of a signed contract? And she said, yes. And I said, do we know when the budget will be approved? Because the way it came in, we moved those things around, I submitted it. No answer, no nothing. Then, if you remember way back when, they said that they would approve a budget as long as Lake Plains can, was the fiduciary, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, then today they decided they wanted a, an MOU, which is the Memorandum of Understanding signed by Whitney, which I have them here, Charlotte sent me with them. Because um, she said, I can't approve it without an MOU. And I'm like, really? You gotta be kidding. So, so anyways, I printed them, I brought them, I'll upload them. That's the last holdup she says on the approved budget, which then we have to all spend down by 3.31. Um, and so we'll do it. I know how to load it and get it done. And so you will have the full 25000 to spend. Part of it does have to go to the meetings. Two people need to go. When are they? March? March. March and, okay. And then... So two people are budgeted to go, and at this point, it's, if you don't spend that money going there, then you'll lose that. It's too late to do any more budget months at this okay. point because they want to, you know, so many weeks ahead of schedule. So that part's approved in there. Um, I asked her when, when I can submit a voucher for all the expenses incurred, and she said when the budget's been approved, which I would hope by uh, tomorrow afternoon or Friday at the latest if I upload these to her tomorrow. Um, and then the rumor around the street was that you were going to get a contract extension because they want the, like, Lake Plains, they want all of our, what do they call those, our program agencies to match REMSCO's dates. So in order to make the, prem, the um, agencies and REMSCO's match, they had to make this one an extension to match up. So they're going to give an extension from 4-1-2020 to 6 2020 and it's a quarter of the amount, so there'll be an additional $6,250 to get. And I have not forgotten about the unclaimed funds, but I have to have that other issue <coughs> fixed before I can stop my feet, because if I don't, they just think I don't know what I'm saying. So that is where we're at with it. So the money's there. It's just this last step, I'm assuming. It just worked out that they wanted an MOU today, and I was coming. So that worked out. Um, and then we're just dealing with the last of the bank issues and cleaning that up. And I got that old tower computer up and running. It's empty, but it's up and running. Um, I just need to get a QuickBooks purchase to put on there. But what I did is in order to, I have to have five years on the gateway. And right now they're still <coughs> shadowing Lake Plains's, so they're still using our audit and our information to keep the gateway going for you guys. Mm -hmm. So. As I was explaining to Sean, that once you put information into QuickBooks, it's digitally there forever. So I started with a spreadsheet first, um, and I've started separating the cons. Some of it's a little hard. There's like a post office receipt for 53 bucks. Well, which con does it go to? Is it go to all of them? Does it die? So there's some that's gray for me that I'm still working at. Um, so we have to build that. Um, so it's going to be five years, so I'm doing 14 to 19 plus 20. It's just too early to do it. So um, we're ordering 13 bank statements because I need that at the end to know, to explain why there was, what money there was at the beginning of 14. And I have to know, some of them just say deposit, so I don't know if they were a state deposit. Cons are pretty easy. Rob helped me out with some of those. Um, but I don't know if that was like a New York state deposit. Was that somebody else is a reimbursement deposit? So I just have to be able to show it in black and white. So once I build it and um, reconcile all the cons, then I'll load them to the QuickBooks to give you a p &L of every con and who's either overpaid, underpaid, or broke even. And we'll go, go from there. But we can't spend, we can't use any state funds to pay back anything from the past. She couldn't have wrote it bigger, more highlighted, and underlined that 
everything has to have a purpose. So if I say we bought you a computer and a printer, they have to be able to see that. We can't use it and pay back anything at all. Otherwise, then it muddies the waters for Lake Plains. And I just had a state audit. <coughs> I really want to have another one. <laughs> so um, that's kind of where we're at. This is, I guess, the last step. And the extension is just an automatic extension. We don't have to jump through the hoops as long as the gateway stays up to date, which we're doing. I'm keeping that up to date. And I think we got that the other day. You, you, I think maybe about a month ago, we loaded the new documents, and then it said you were pre-qualified to do business again. So, Good. so maybe. It's been a year. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and younger. Well, I mean, since I got, yeah. since, since I jumped, since I jumped into a fry pan, yes. I didn't know I was jumping into an awkward. Yeah. <laughs> so we figured it was February of last year that we got that message from Tom to Hannah, I think, yeah. and then we just so been a year, but I think I said a year it would take. Mm -hmm. It's about there, so we're just about finished. Mm -hmm. sure yeah. Thank you. That's all I got on that. Unless you have more questions. Okay. Okay. Um, Isn't that a crazy amount of work for twenty-five grand? <coughs> you're good with what you what you had to say. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys where it stood, and if you have more questions, um, but the gateway's done. It's loaded. It's saved. It's so if some terms are up next year, it's okay to change officers next year. Yes. <laughs> if you could just wait till the end of the week and let me get the budget okay. final approved and submit a voucher. That would be just great. Okay. And then that's the only other thing I have to create for you once the budget's done. It's a FS, it's a state financial system. And it'll know, like Lake Plains will know when we send in a voucher, it'll appear all of a sudden and say pending, what, pending BC, pending OSC, and then pay and approve with a date that it'll go in the bank account. So that way for like the work for Lake Plains, for the um, accounting stuff, mm -hmm. we'll just know and then we'll run the check through QuickBooks and then later um, Sean will just come sign the checks, whether whoever the checks are for. So it'll just run through that. But we'll get an alert then um, who, you know, that the money's dropped and it's there at the pending date and all that. So then you'll know when it's in the And in the, the future, our checks will require two signatures, not one, right? I believe that was what the request was. Yeah. I think that's in the Yeah, just in the past. It doesn't matter how much the amount is. Like, we're five over 5,000. There was a bunch written to cash. I just signed by one person. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So I want I want them to require I might have cringed a little bit last week. Things that make you cringe. I might have said bad words. Yeah. So, yeah. There's, yeah. I'm trying to creatively load those somehow. Or Creatively. Yeah. Should we have just take a quick look and have weights on that one? Usually, so that you know, they want to come back. So that we're, we're actually there. signing two. One is for 2020 and one is for 19 because your contract collapses two years. So we made them calendar year. Okay. okay. So you know what he signed. I'll up. just make a motion that we have Wade sign the 2019 and 2020 MOU for the gateway in conjunction with late claims. And we will run the checks, but Lake Plains will not sign anything of them. We'll just run them so they run through QuickBooks and they get you an automatic, but we don't want anything like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, you have to vote that because that's what the bank will look at. That right. you will vote we at. we yeah. just want to reaffirm yeah. that yeah. again tonight. Yeah. Well, it's an appointment because the person that left. Right. But as long as it's in your minutes right. um, that we can take to the bank. Yeah. Correct. So I just wanted to reaffirm it tonight yeah. so we have it on record. Okay. A vote for reaffirming Sean as the interim treasurer. Sorry. If, you're, if you're good with that, I would make a motion that <coughs> we keep that to 
we have to have two signers for the checks. Uh, the recommendations were for you and I to be signers on the check. We can put a we can put a third one on as well, can't we? Yes. Yeah, it, that, I would recommend that actually four of us on should right now. And it's more than that. Should I was gonna say we are four yeah, we're going to make a motion for the four officers yeah. to be signers for the checks. So, so we need to be adding one. Oh, okay. yeah, we, have the, we, have the we need to make a motion tonight just for the matter of record because so we need to do this tonight to make a motion that the four executive officers are the signers for the checks. In, in, in the officers in the, in the motion. I don't know. Well, if, if we name the officers, though, do we have to change that later on? No. Does that hurt? Do we have to do this every year? And if we name they want the all the officers to sign? Will they all be available signers? Not that they all, you know. That means all of you have to meet at the same time at the bank, remember? When we went down there? I don't know. So you almost have to attach your name to it. Five star, and it would have to be at the same yeah, bank. We, yeah, we all went at different times the last time. Oh, she told us. It, it, she, yeah, she was saying there was, there was two of us that stopped in the medallion. Well, how about we I'll go? Know. I'll go ask Shannon again tomorrow and go look. It's write it down what I gotta have because she did tell you that you both had to be there right. to sign for it. I'll take a couple more. It, 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 it depends on what bank or what officer you're talking to. So I've been through yeah. this several times with the right. fire department, and there's sometimes we've got to send everybody in at the same yeah, time. Bank of America sends me with the signature card to my office. I walk around, I get Jay and Betty and Charlotte and yeah. everybody to sign yeah. them, and I drop yeah. back yeah. up in the yeah. bank. No, I so I'll ask everybody. Cheryl stopped down later and did a couple days. All right, I'll ask the branch manager tomorrow. I'll go in and just say, you know, we're going to have to change the signature cards. Yeah, we're going to have to change the no, same oh, thing. Same thing. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. The problem is we have to do this to be able to find out who's on the bank. Well, we need to at least get two on there now. We know, yeah, yeah, we know who's yeah. we know who's on there, but we want to make sure we get those that are no longer signers. We just need a clear we new signature clear card. card. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you make a motion for a two. new signature card to include the four officers. There you go. That's a nice motion. I'll sign that. Well, Sean can't make that motion. I did. Oh, okay. All in favor of that proposal? Aye. 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 Opposed? last meeting in October we've had uh, a few classes that we've done uh, to include an instructor update we did a CIC class as well but that only had about three people so um, and there are a whole host of EMT classes going on particularly at Entrip. Uh, I do want to point out that they are running their first hybrid EMT course there in starting two weeks, one week, uh, and there's six openings still left. So if anybody's interested, they're, they're trying to fill that up. Um, so over the course of time, we had uh, Corfu who got approval to use EPCR. They are going to the ESO platform and Stafford Fire uh, requested the use of CPAP, uh, which they did get approval on. Um, so everybody should know at this point, the new CME policy is in effect. There are forms 
that are now on the website and those I will I will caution everyone those are temporary forms because uh, the goal is to move into a uh, electronic version which I'm sure Ed can talk a little bit about if you wanted to but uh, it's going to be more like very similar to how you apply for a renewal on your driver's license. Um, I also want to mention that at the last state meeting in January, there were four emergency regulations that were pushed through waiting on the commissioner's signature uh, that do affect the CME policy, and one of those being the continuing practice clause. Um, so as soon as I get info that those have been signed, I will push those out and what they entail. Uh, but it has to do with the fact of transitioning the paramedics to CBT and kind of getting them to be able to do CME recertification uh, without jumping through hoops. Because the, the CME is getting more and more complicated as we go, even though the process ultimately is going to be easier for providers. Um, but that transition is, is going on. Um, we're 100% online uh, with the CME program at Lake Plains. Again, I want to encourage that if any agency is interested, please reach out to, uh, I'm going to defer to Charlotte. She does usually run the program down there. Uh, we've had agencies, more and more agencies now moving on board with that. Uh, so, and I really think that that's going to be the way to um, go. Um, as far as the CBT, it has moved permanently for all paramedics. Uh, so the paramedics can only do uh, CBT testing for uh, the original refresher classes. Um, and I believe for the originals, they've now gone to the new PSE rules. Yes, that is correct. Whether it's accredited or not accredited program, um, accredited, you'll still work with National Registry uh, for those students that are taking the registry. But a state rep will be uh, is designated to be on site at all practical skills uh, evaluations for original programs, whether that program is accredited or not. Um, we're still phasing that in because, you know, I uh, I would say that um, there's a lot a lot of practical skills exams that go on across the state and certainly within the region. So, you know, we're, we're going to ramp up to that level. You know, I mean, I've got um, two staff members and one of them's me for Zephyr County. So it's kind of, uh, you know, we're going to see where that, where, where that goes. And we're looking at uh, regional faculty and the other components that are, that are coming along with that. So, uh, but that the goal is is that there'll be a state rep at every practical skills uh, examination for permits. Permits, yes, that's right. Um, and lastly, I want to mention, in case you haven't heard, the state has transitioned to now four meetings a year as opposed to the three. Is creating havoc on everyone's budgets. Um, so the meetings now are going to be in January, March, June, and October. Uh, which brings me to originally we have scheduled the June meeting um, and we're actually going to have to move that. Uh, you guys are going to have to uh, probably look at that because that actually falls on the week of state meetings. You say January, March, June, and September? October. October. Well, there's four a month, they're not every three months. <coughs> Which it, it, they probably did something due to the summertime. I, mean, I don't see a big, huge participation on that. Um, and since the last meeting, we've had two more agencies come on board with the PEC program Tri Town Ambulance and Walcottsville Fire Department have both come on board. Um, the last thing that I wanted to bring up that Charlotte actually wanted me to bring up to you guys. Um, we have been looking at uh, and in discussions with uh, UBFD who currently, uh, for those of you that might actually participate in Wyoming Erie County, they do their credentialing through their portal. Um, 
and we have a way to kind of jump on board at a lower cost than what they obviously expect. Um, and as one of your deliverables, credentialing uh, falls under there, and we're going to be looking to ask <coughs> for financial support from the REMSCO on that. Um, I don't have an exact dollar because I don't think we've officially gotten a contract yet, but I think it's going to be in the neighborhood of 3000 a year, I want to say. So I'm bringing that forward on Charlie's behalf. I don't know if you guys want to vote on that or... Um, I think it's going to um, offer better opportunities for this region. Uh, as far as reporting, that way you don't get 20 million phone calls from me knowing where's your stuff. Um, and agency leaders can actually keep an eye on that a little better. I, I can speak to what we use that at Twin City. Um, and it creates far less headaches than having to have everything on paper and send paper to the um, local uh, program agency when you're done. Um, it creates transparency for the agency, but also for the provider, so the provider knows exactly um, what they need to do <coughs> when their operation is. Um, they can go in there at any time and add, update their certs. Um, at Twin City, we personally, as an agency, do that for the provider. We ask that the provider does it themselves, but we make sure that it's done because as an agency, it's, we feel it's our responsibility to make sure we keep our people online. Um, I think it can be agency dependent for the <laughs> other, for the Niagara, Orleans, and Genesee. But it makes things a lot easier, creates a lot of transparency <coughs> for <coughs> providers, but also for agencies. And you don't have to carry as much paper and make sure you're sending masses, mass amounts of paper to the local program agency to make sure that he has it meant for him to hold on to it and put it onto a spreadsheet. So this cost is a guess? Um, I don't know what um, here in Wyoming covers for that. Is that per agency? No, that's total. total. That's total, total. for the whole region. Oh. That's for the region. So that, that's, that's to be able to piggyback off. Yeah. Yeah. This it's is to piggyback off. Our RAMSCO is supporting that to make is sure. There, is that something we can pay for through Big Lakes for the region? Yeah, I have a budget and I'm just trying to find, you know. Okay. It should be able to. I mean, that, that is essentially what Lake Plains is, is asking is that okay. the RAMSCO, okay. Okay. which you, okay. you have the money and you can budget Yeah, it. I just don't. I'm just trying to find the right one. I've seen so many. I think it also makes things from a regional standpoint with especially the local volunteer departments that have a tendency to change leadership, EMS officers on a year-to-year -year basis. It's a easier transi transition for somebody if they reach out to Rob, to Rob to show them, <coughs> send them an in-service or an FAQ sheet how to use the program. Instead of Rob having to sit down and take more time and sit and talk with individual or try to track them down so no agencies go offline. And that's just your skills? It's yeah. everything. It's, it's skills, everything. it's cards. Cards, it's everything. Yeah. Everything that the REMAC requires. I remember, in this system, can the agency can do everything on behalf of the provider too, right? Yes. The provi individual providers have to <coughs> go in there and make changes, but as an agency, we make those changes to make sure that they get done. So, so one thing I see a lot of the doubling, tripling of the work kind of disappearing because I know you know, Niagara Falls very efficient. They send me a spreadsheet of all their people. I'm sure that takes time. And then, you know, I've turned around and posted it into a portal that we have in our office. That takes time. So instead of them doing the spreadsheet or any other agencies that do that, they can just enter that information directly into that. System. And then when you're ready to submit to the remap or to the program agency that you are verifying that everyone is done, you just hit verify. That's and it. Done. And the program agency gets notified.
rider standpoint, your username is your credential number from the state. So, and you just create your own new password. Yeah, I can't open it for some reason. But I did. I, I knew it was. I knew it was eight hundred dollars a quarter to, for maintenance, and then I, I want to say twenty-eight <coughs> sixty-six is about ish. And I did put that in the budget because you had all the you had all the money per se that you didn't go to the state meetings with, so we put that in there. And then there was a couple other things she was fussing that we, you know, that the state doesn't allow to be paid for. So we moved that into that to pay for that as well. And also one last thing that that's really cool about the other thing. Agencies, multiple agencies can go on there and look for the providers on the bank. I do think I don't have to connect with agency. You put your agency in there. And then if so, if you are at multiple agencies, and if somebody's done the skills at one point and you just upload it, that's verifying that for the report. Now, if the individual agency still requires it, that's up to the individual agency. But. I, I don't believe so. I believe that is that's all. At least since we already touched on DOH, that you have anything else? Uh, the only thing, um, and Al will put together, I want not you talk about your little, uh, okay. your new name is COVID for the, uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19, uh, yeah. Yeah, Al has put together a little document, but I will say. COVID. COVID. Yeah, COVID. Yeah. Thank you. It's COVID, not COVID. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not COVID-19. <laughs> yeah, COVID-19. Um, yeah. um, if I could just say something first, sure. Alex, with the um, our Bureau website, uh, there's policy statement 2002 that has gone out. We are currently working on, it's going up through the vetting process, uh, a guidance document for agencies, a guidance document for providers, and sort of a guidance document for uh, regionalization of um, you know, with the PSAPs and all the information that is out there refers directly to, to the CDC. So I would I would encourage you to continue to uh, monitor our website. Uh, those policy statements should be coming out soon. It's sort of a fluid uh, situation, but I think the, the key is uh, coordination of resources, working closely with the uh, public health departments, local health departments is their key to the uh, integration of the uh, of the system related to this and the appropriate PPE is, uh, is is certainly gloves, masks, goggles, and a gown, and uh, appropriate decontamination of, of the vehicle. And the high risk situations are uh, related, to, related to aerosol uh, medication delivery, and they're recommending the uh, <coughs> rear door of the ambulance be opened, and everybody, minimal patient contact, including um, you know the drivers and, and there's some other guidance information in there so hey, i'll talk about your, your document but i would also refer you to uh, our policy statements there will be a couple more policies coming out over the next few days so. what, what this is this is kind of a hybrid if you look on the back side there's some of the um, line items that are brayed out anything on here that's in white as far as the policy goes came from at the bureau of ems <laughs> statement any of the stuff on the back is gray stuff that's a lot of it's kind of common sense but it came off of the federal guidance um, I did start out with isolation and quarantine because on Monday I was over in Genesee County talking to um, Tim, Bill, and Gary, and they had been on a state call with state um, EMO, and they were under the impression from that call that um, isolation was less severe, it was voluntary, and quarantine was more severe, it was mandatory. So I had to straighten them out on that. You know, you know, you know, make make sure that everybody that you're working with understands the fact that quarantine is exposed people that aren't exhib exhibiting any symptoms. Isolation is ill people that need to be isolated for treatment. And both of them can be either voluntary or mandatory. So you know, it, it doesn't really matter along that way. Um, as far as um, what we're doing in the two counties, it's in process in Orleans County, it's done in Genesee County. Um, we have, um, if we get anybody in the counties, that um, requires quarantine. They're gonna be in their quarantine. We're gonna notify the dispatch that we have somebody in the county. They're under quarantine. Their, their quarantine starts today. It ends on whatever 14 days is from today, the 26th, whatever. Um, and the people that are under the quarantine, part of their quarantine instructions that they receive from our office is if you require emergency transport for any reason, you notify the 911 operator that you speak to that you are under a quarantine for coronavirus. 
um, the 911 operator that has the instructions to um, contact the hospital and contact the on-call health department person. And then we'll handle it from there and then work it. What we're trying to avoid is having a single ambulance company have an ambulance out for anywhere from three to five hours, depending on what happens, because they're, they're, they're going by the same um, rules and regulations as measles and tuberculosis. You need a two hour clearance time before the rig can be used for another person after they've had a symptomatic person in the back of the rig. Um, the big thing is if somebody's traveled to um, the Hubei province in China, they're coming back, that's, that should be really slowing down now. Um, if, they, if they're symptomatic, they're gonna get shipped right into a facility. They're not even gonna come into our area. They're only coming in through um, the 11 big airports. Um, New York, uh, JFK and, and Newark are the two closest to us that they're bringing them into. If they come in from mainland China um, and they're symptomatic, they're going to be put into, they've got a, a hotel <coughs> they arrangement with for quarantine. They'll be put into the hotel, they'll be evaluated, and then um, state health is using ambulance to transport them from New York City to wherever they belong in New York State. And in the process, the local health department will be notified, and therefore the rest of the, the area will be notified that they've got somebody coming in. Um, any other place in China that they come in from, um, if, they, if they have um, the symptoms, they'll be checked, they'll, they'll be placed under um, a quarantine when they get back into their home area. If they're asymptomatic, um, they're, pla they're, they're requested to be under a, a voluntary quarantine. The state can override that um, and push it a little bit further if, you know, as, as, as things progress. The big thing that they talked about on the call yesterday is the fact that um, the fever is really not a telling sign. The fe less than 40% of the people that they've caught have had a fever. Um, it's the respiratory distress that's the big teller. So, you know, especially the respiratory distress, the travel to China, that's where you wanna get the red flag up. You wanna you want um, glove up, gown up, mask up, get your goggles on before you approach within six feet of the patient. They're recommending a six foot clearance because of the aerosol. Um, Can I ask a question? Sure. So is dispatch asking them if they've traveled to China? No. So we're just walking in black. Right. No, you're right. You're right. They just finally came out with a guidance document, I think it was today, that dispatch agencies yes. can use. And so that we've got to roll that out to dispatch <coughs> in both counties and say, are you willing to start asking the people that have yeah. respiratory distress? Yeah. Um, that'll happen tomorrow morning. Um, right now, the chances of that happening, fortunately, are very slim because anybody that's coming in from China is getting shuffled through those airports. There was a, a big concern initially because people were coming in, they would fly to an alternate destination, mm -hmm. change plates, change, change carriers, and then they fly like into Toronto on Cathay Pacific. Mm -hmm. And then they drive across the border. So you, you, know, you really had no knowledge of what was going on. Since then, they've, they've tightened the outgoing flights down as far as where they're going. It, it, it's still possible that yeah. Uh, just, just you know, to the uh, we had a, a about a three-hour meeting with Customs Border Patrol today. Uh, Health and Human Services has physicians and teams on site at each of the border crossings now. That's new. Okay, uh, good. I think it started two days ago. Uh, so we've been briefed on uh, what their process is related to. Um, you know, there could be an individual that has gone through Europe and you know, some other areas that they might not necessarily catch, but they're screening everybody through their uh, with their passport at the border. The information is centralized through DC. And if anybody has traveled to China on, the, on a passport type situation, that data then is immediately forwarded and hits their system when they come to the border. Um, so they would be screened. They'd be asked if anybody is ill. Um, and they would then uh, be referred if they have any symptomology. If they're a foreign national or they're a uh, <laughs> Canadian citizen or a citizen from another area that does not is not a U.S. citizen, they'll be turned back to the Canadian side. If, if they are a U.S. citizen, um, the physician there would contact the local health department. If they're a critical condition, they uh, you know they would dial 911 for for EMS transport. But we're trying to do everything we can to minimize the number of EMS transports that are doing cross-border stuff. Um, so realistically, there could be a, a, an individual who had travel, was not necessarily symptomatic, but they would be, uh, say they're going to New York City, they'd be notifying the health departments along the way. So it's, it's, they've tightened that whole component up, 
Uh, it's just happening at the uh, Buffalo Niagara border crossings at this point. So just highly unlikely in the summer crossing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I generally you, you would either know, yeah. you know what I mean, from the yeah. you know they clamp that whole piece down now. You know, there's always the what ifs and you know student visas and all sorts of stuff. Right. But we're, we're getting to the point where. Knock, knock wood, asymptomatic transmission is still not proven. They've had a couple that they're trying to um, knock off that, you know, that, that you know, the person may or may not have been symptomatic and just didn't realize it. Um, but out of the, the number of cases they've got, you know, the two is a pretty small yes. number. Um, thank you for mentioning the students. We did contact GCC, and GCC has no Chinese nationals on campus this semester. So that was a good thing from, you know, from the, the illness standpoint. Um, like I was saying, you know, the, um, the PPE is, is, is the contact and aerosol precautions as well as scan precautions. If the driver assists the medic with doing anything, the driver is supposed to doff all their gear, do um, hand sanitation, put on a clean N95, and then get into drive if the um, driver's compartment can't be separated from the rest of the rig. If the driver's compartment can't be segregated from the, from the, the patient compartment, you're supposed to take everything off of recirculation, turn up, turn the ventilation fans on high, and turn the exhaust fan on high in the back of the rig so that everything is being drawn out through the back of the rig and, and it's not getting into the driver's compartment. Thank you. Um, they're recommending not doing any um, patient documentation until after you've um, gotten the patient to the facility and doffed your gear because of the fact that you're, you're going to be handling you know, your, whether it's electronic PCR or what, you know, whatever it is that you're using, you know, they're recommending not, you know, not, not um, doing your full notes until after you clean yourself up. Um, and also, um, before you um, start to um, sanitize the back of the rig, um, <coughs> Don, clean uh, PPE. So, you know, you're, you're going to be going through, you know, potentially, you know, two to three sets of PPE per person on the rig if you get something in the, in the back of your rig. Um, Follow the, the, the label directions on whatever um, disinfectant you're using. Um, that simple green has to stay wet for 10 minutes. So, you know, you know, be, be aware of what it is you're using as a disinfectant in the back of your rig, and make sure you're following the um, the labels. Um, one of the things that the federal government said, and, and Ed alluded to it, is when you get to, to the hospital, you, you, you're, you've uh, taken the patient out, leave the rig doors open. Leave, leave all your fans on, leave the rig doors open. And that just makes a, a larger area for the air to flow through, get, you know, get some, more, some more air transfer out, and potentially clean the rig out a little faster. Um, like and I said, you get a DOH rate up for leaving your rig unlocked. Well, that, 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 that's the difference between federal government and state government. They do recommend posting yeah. somebody there. Yeah. Right. And then, and then the, the other thing that they said was just make sure that your staff, um, you know, you know, treat, you know, treat it like an exposure. If, if you have somebody um, in the back of the rig, and make sure that any staff um, who did transport a person with coronavirus makes sure they're self-monitoring and keeping an eye on on their condition. I guess was discussion today, Al, that if you do, uh, if there is a transport, they will. Uh, they are they're, they're considering ensuring that any EMS personnel that does transport somebody will be on a self-monitoring type situation and, and report to the local health department. Okay. So that, that that I don't I. I think that um, is still in progress. They're making some decision trees today uh, related to that. But then there's a, you know, the other thing too is is that from EMS agency, if you look at that policy statement that should be out, and you know, I, I, there's an executive. You know, we have multiple layers of like, you know, it's got to go to EPI, it's got to go to legal, it's got to go. So you know, the draft is done. There's been a lot. Of, these are being pushed out as promptly as we can get them out, but. The, um, the agency one and the CDC, it's not, there is information on the CDC specifically to healthcare facilities and healthcare workers. And the question was, well, EMS, you know, it's, it, it was more for hospitals, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a very similar uh, situation where closed, confined uh, space <coughs> and the recommendations, uh, if you, you can really get into the, the devils in the details, they say if you're doing invasive procedures and you, you know, they go through a significant amount of scenarios to say, okay, if you were in the back and you did an invasive procedure or you had cardiac arrest and there was intubation, which are obviously higher risk type situations, and it was a patient under uh, investigation, 
and you didn't have one of the uh, appropriate PPEs on, you, you know, it's automatic that you'd be quarantined for, uh, you know, 14 days. You'd be out of work for 14 days <laughs> in home, home quarantine uh, type situation. They've got varying degrees of self-monitoring that kind of stuff. So the, the real message is, is just to ensure that everybody is aware of the appropriate PPE precautions and that they're, they're trained, they're ready, and, uh, you know, th there's always the risk that you're going to walk into something that you don't know what it is until you get in there, but that, that should be very, very rare in, in this type right. of situation. Um, and uh, the resources, the front line of the, uh, the, the sphere of this is certainly the local health department, so, you know, if there is a, a situation, uh, reach out to the local health department, go consult with the state, CDC, et cetera, and, uh, you know, the other component is, is try to get PPE equipment, you know, now if you don't have it, uh, there's also some resource allocation, stuff like that. And if you absolutely run out, you can put a request in through OEM to uh, put a request up to the state if there is a, you know, I mean, they, they are, you know, and I'm not trying to, you know, the flu is much more, mm -hmm. you know, 40 some odd thousand people have died from the, the flu. Quote me on the number. I think it's you're, you're, you're so the that was yeah. about that, mm -hmm. you know, and here we've got, you know, uh, very, you know, so it, keep that in mind, but the fact is, is that, you know, <coughs> can't get PPE equipment. So if you do need it, reach out to OEM and, you know, they're talking about the, the strategies of regionalization of utilization of, uh, you know, appropriate equipment and all those components. So, you know, it's an important thing to be alerted to and who knows what the what the next, uh, you know, the next one will be. So this is good that people are prepared. You know, I mean, it's very similar to SARS and it's, you know, the whole, uh, you, know, what, you know, what's the, spin the wheel, we'll see what's, what's next on the, the virus or the uh, epidemiological, uh, you know, crisis that, that, that's but you know, I think you're starting to see the numbers of people who are 14 grow, especially you know across the state. But I think there's like 14 people who are being monitored. None of them affected from cases mm -hmm. in the uh, you know in this, this particular region. Is where there's uh, um, and the number was Rochester. Right? Seventeen. As of this morning, oh, seventeen, 17 more being in Rochester this so. morning. But thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one last thing, um, hospitalized. One of the things that's, that, that is kind of being not really said completely all the time is the, um, the real-time PCR tests that they're putting out to the, um, the local um, labs, local being the, the state labs in New York City. Um, that's on the EUA right now, emergency, emergency use authorization. And part of the EUA is you need to take um, double samples. One sample would go to Wadsworth and the other sample has to go down to CDC still because of the fact that they're working under the EUA. So if, if you if you do work for a healthcare facility and you're taking samples, you need to take two sets. One and right now everything's going to CDC, but by the end of this week they're hoping to have the testing capability at Wadsworth. So if, but even once Wadsworth is up, you'll need to do two sets and one to Wadsworth for a fast turnaround, and the other one to CDC for the confirmed for work. Um, yeah, other than that, there's not much reason to stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Protect yourselves and your people, though, at least. You know. um, the computer-based testing, we, we talked a lot about that. The, uh, you know, the, the train is sort of left the station related to currently it's paramedic, um, CIC and CLIs. The next level, I think, is going to be AEMT, and eventually we're going to get to um, the EMT uh, level. And they're working out the, the kinks on that. The important piece from a core sponsor perspective is the and of course, paperwork that's got to be turned around as promptly as you possibly can so that uh, that can be entered into the system. And um, I think their objective in talking to Gene Taylor earlier was is that, you know, they're, they're going to roll this out um, sooner rather than later. And the, the timeline, I don't want to commit to because we say that and then everybody says, oh, they said, you know, but I, the goal is, I'll say the goal is, is by the end of the year that everything will be, uh, all the EMS certification levels will be computer-based testing. So, um, you know, like it or love it, this thing's coming, and uh, it, it gives a lot more flexibility. Um, they, they have talked about, you know, adding additional sites now. Currently, it's Rochester and Buffalo. Um, you know, the difference is, is that, you, you know, once you walk out the door with the computer-based testing results, um, you're, you're technically certified. That is actually a certification, whether, you know, now you go for uh, on-site scoring or you wait the, um, you know, a few weeks <laughs> the few weeks for the certification card. Uh, if you did it from on-site testing, you, you have to wait for the official results to come in the mail. So just sort of 
it, it gives you a little bit of peace of mind that you got it from his watch. Uh, I'd say testing, but it doesn't really give you any ability to practice at that level or to start to learn the So um, that uh, I think. There hasn't been anything else that, uh, that hasn't been covered. Uh, the narcotics agencies, uh, we have changed the reporting requirements. Uh, there's a new form, you can Google it, it's uh, 3848, and that is um, is now biannual, semi-annual. We're not doing quarterly on the uh, ketamine and uh, fentanyl and other, other medications. So everything will be done on, they've simplified the form a little bit, uh, and the reporting will be submitted uh, electronically. So I'll uh, believe it when I see it. It's mm -hmm. out there. No, the, the form's up there. No, it's I meant the easier part. <coughs> oh, wait, no, no, the form's, e the form's easier. You don't have to put the, the number of pediatric patients and all that kind of stuff. I mean, really, it's it's pretty much. What's a you still have to get the doctor? Okay, so I I, mean, I say easier, but maybe I shouldn't say it's easier. It's 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 modified. So, but the data part is is not as is complex. It's you know, simple math. You're able to what you had, how much you received, how much you wasted, and how much you did lose. Any questions, I'd be glad to answer them, but I think that's, that's basically where we're at. Any questions for Ed? Any questions for Al? Okay, we'll move on to old business. Do we have any old business that we have to talk about? Now we'll move on to the new business. Um, we'll be taking a vote on the CON for South Wilson Fire Department. Wait, wait, before you do that, real quick, I did have two more things that I oh, okay. refreshed. In my mind. <laughs> um, with the new CME policy, there, all the CME participating agencies in the next two years um, have two new things to deal with, one of those being EPCR systems. I have been in communication with several of the departments so far. Um, I'm urging that your agencies at least reach out. I, all I'm looking for is just to have a conversation and to provide you with, you know, some of the things you should be looking for, some of the things that are currently available, and some of the things that are coming down the road. Um, I'm not looking to sell you on anything, um, and you obviously wouldn't have to make a decision right away. But I just really would like to get with in touch with a lot of the agencies and just kind of start having that conversation now. Um, the second thing is, in, uh, particularly with Orleans County, um, we we aren't getting a lot of requests for opioid disorder courses, classes. And we really want to start bumping up our numbers in Orleans County. So if your agency wants the opioid training, please reach out to me. I know that I have just talked to Kristen the other day over Ridgeway and she set up a class for next month sometime. I, I apologize, I think like the 24th or, or something. So we we just really want to show our presence and, and that we have that capability. Um, and when it comes to education, we seem to lack a little bit in Orleans County and we don't want to, we don't want to deny you guys that, that opportunity. I mean, you're, you're part of this region as well. Usually I get extremes from either Niagara or Genesee. So we're here. That's what I want to say. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, real quick, we're just going to have uh, Sean give you a quick explanation of what we're going to be voting on. Okay, so we had the public hearing uh, on the South Wilson application for uh, advanced life support first responder. We had that on December 16th at the South Wilson Fire Department. Mark Falter <coughs> was a public hearing officer. He came back with his findings of fact uh, and basically his conclusion and recommendation was based on the foregoing of the evidence that was presented to him and the people that spoke at the public hearing. He recommends that we approve their application. The application process was deemed complete. Uh, they followed the policy 0606. Um, the fitness and competency was done, so obviously because we couldn't have the public hearing without it. Um, so the matter went before the con committee this evening who recommended bringing it to the full council for a vote tonight. So that brings us to where we are. 
Um, I've got copies of, you know, their application, the transcripts from the minute, from the public hearing, and a copy of his conclusions with us tonight if anyone wants to review that. Was anything listed about how many providers? Is it still one? It just says two of And in their application, they had the one and part of their, you know, the discussion that I had with the uh, agency is, you know, once they, if they get their ALS FR, they are going to start working towards all their other uh, EMTs to work towards getting their ALS. Oh, no, I don't want to be counted. 
<laughs> One little thing that probably should have just been mentioned is, is that anybody should have declared a um, they had a conflict of interest. And that, that's always important for the minutes. I don't know. Was that, did you mention it? No, we didn't. You're just right. saying it's a, it's a little late that I said it. Or just for some reason. But, you know, yeah. perhaps you could just discuss that. Yeah. Officially in your minutes. <laughs> that nobody has a conflict of interest. Yeah. I mean, usually we do it. Yeah. yeah, so that I, well, yeah, I usually jump on that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then I guess I should ask though, if anybody that voted feels they have a conflict of interest.
Um, Irv is being honored by the state. He's going on the EMS Memorial uh, Tuesday, May 19th at 11 a.m. Um, trying to garner support and get people from the region, especially the western region, to show a, a good su uh, supporting, supporting show for him um, while we're out there. So if you guys want to pass that along, I'll remind everybody come April. Um, we're trying to just, you know, it's very rare that somebody from the western region actually goes up there. So um, it would be a good showing if we could have a large contingent from western north out there for him. Um, and then lastly, too, um, from a Twin City standpoint, um, there has been a rumor out there that we discovered today that Twin City is looking to um, diminish its footprint in Nyer County. Um, that is not true. We actually talked to the source where the potential rumor came out today. Um, the main points of contention that we were looking to give away Frontier and Adams Fire Company. Um, just want to reiterate that is not the case. Um, if anything, we're trying to improve the reliability in the townships where we serve. So.